Well, hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess and welcome to our seventh lab exercise on selections, joins, and relates. And in this one we're going to be exploring a geodatabase that makes extensive use of relationship classes. So I'm going to show you how to take advantage of that, how to use that network of relationship classes to, to get lots of information from a whole variety of, of related tables. All right, so First off, we're going to load up this Coconino Springs feature class. It is in your class GIS data in the workspace relationship classes. Okay, there we go. Okay, these are all the springs from Springs Online, a database from the Spring Stewardship Institute. These are what we have for the Coconino National Forest, uh, updated as recently as August of 2022. So we have all the surveys up till that day. Okay, so let's 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 move into this. Now, this is a cool lab exercise. The geodatabase is a cool geodatabase, and you can do neat things with it. Unfortunately, there appears to be a bug as of ArcGIS Pro 3.0.1, in which it is unable to properly traverse the network of related tables if those tables aren't loaded into your map. This is something new. It worked fine in, in ArcGIS Pro 2, and it worked fine back in the Arc Map days. So this is something that appears to have just been introduced. So we have to work around this problem by loading up those tables first. These are the tables we need to load, and once we do that, uh, the, the, you know, the, the tool will work just fine. Uh, we could load it a couple of ways. If we knew where all the tables were, we could just open up the geodatabase and scroll through this long list of them, pick the right tables out. It's kind of a hassle. So there's another way. I'm just gonna, and, and I illustrate this other way in this document here, but let's just run through it real quick. Open up the table. We're gonna take advantage of the ability to push selection from one table to another. When you do that, ArcGIS Pro will load up that table automatically. All right, so we open up the Springs attribute table. We hit switch the, so they're all selected. We push this selection, hit the little burger thing, go to related data, go to the table surveys. When we did that, the surveys table got loaded up. We're gonna push this to the related data, data set uh, table images. That got the images. Let's click back on surveys, push this selection to invert sampling. That loaded that one. From invert sampling, let's push it one more time to taxa invert. Okay, now we have our four tables that we need. So I'm going to close this, clear the selection. I'm just going to throw in a couple of base maps because I kind of like them. Let's go to, this is a server we connected to back in lecture two when we were talking about data types. I'm going to open up National Geographic, Topo Maps, and World Imagery. National Geographic is good for the extent of the Coconino. All right, so we have our data ready to go. We have our four tables ready to go, so ArcGIS Pro won't crash on us. Let's jump into the lab exercise. Okay, first up, we want to find the measured spring flow at Black Bear Spring. Now, we're going to have to traverse three tables to do that. Uh, we start with the springs feature class. We go to the surveys table and from surveys table there's a table of flow values. You actually have a poster of all this in your folder with the relationship classes. This shows how all of the tables are connected up in the Springs Geo database. So a lot of, a lot of things going on in here. To get to the flow values, this is the table that has flow. Flow is connected to Springs uh, through the surveys table. So we'd have to go to Springs Feature Class, has a one-to-many relationship with surveys. Surveys has a one-to-one -one relationship with flow. Okay, let's go back to it. So we have to select Black Bear Springs. Site ID is 576. This is select by attributes on the Springs, where site ID is equal to 576. Okay, we've got one spring selected. 
we want to know where it is, you can kind of see it down here, but it's real hard to see. Pro doesn't do good at showing selections. But what we can do is we can click just the show the selected ones. So now we can just see Black Bear Springs. We can right click over here and go to pan to. And now the map is centered on Black Bear Springs. And we can just change the scale to say 1 to 1000. Let's look at it in imagery. All right, there is Black Bear Spring. Okay, to see the flow, first we have to find the surveys that have been done on this spring, and then the flow values have been recorded for the surveys. We can do that with the Explore tool. We click that, click on Black Bear Springs. Here's all the information on the spring in the Springs feature class itself, quite a bit but we can now start diving into the related tables. So we have two surveys that have been done on it. Let's just look at the first survey. Okay, these are all the tables that are connected up to the surveys table. And we want to go to the table flow. Click on that. Okay, we got one flow measurement recorded for this survey and I have opened it up. So here is the record describing flow. Now the measured flow is this right here. Measured flow LS means in liters per second. So there was 0 0.071 liters per second measured on this survey. Survey happened to be done back on 2013. All right, that's all it is to that. Okay, next part of the lab exercise is to use a real similar method to take a look at photographs of Black Bear Spring. So we can use the Explore tool again, click on it, Here's Black Bear Spring. The, to get to the photographs, we have to go through the surveys table. So surveys, here are two surveys again. Let's click on that first survey. Okay, the photographs are stored in this table called images. So I can click on this. We have two images recorded. Okay, if it says the image type is sketch, that means it's a hand-drawn map of the spring. If the image type is representative, that means it's a photograph. So we can just click on this. It's a link right to it. And here's an image of Black Bear Spring. If we click on the second one, the sketch map, it'll show us the map that somebody drew of Black Bear Spring back in 2013. All right. If you're curious, we could take a look at the other survey a second survey was done in 2019, so six years later. Let's see what images were recorded for that time. Here we get two images again. One is an additional image. The other is a representative image. So let's just click on it. Uh, Black Bear Spring has changed a little in six years. Let's look at this other image. It's just a close-up of some of the vegetation there. All right, so that's how you can use the, the network to see images of the data. All right. Now for your homework, you're going to do exactly that stuff that we did, but instead of Black Bear Spring, you're going to go to Strahan Spring. It's site ID 1096. So same method. You just open up the select by attributes, do site ID equal to 1096, hit apply. We could open the attribute field and pan to that single spring. Pan to it. Okay, here's Strahan spring. Let's look at under look at it with the Topo Maps background. Yeah, so there's Strahan spring. Right over close to Volunteer Canyon and the whole uh, Sycamore Canyon network there. All right, so you'll be using the same thing, the Explore tool. You'll click on it. You'll see what surveys have been conducted on Stray and Spring. You'll open that up. Looks like several surveys have been done on Stray and Spring. You click on one of those. Go to the table Flow. And click on this, and you see a flow value recorded. So it looks like they probably have several flow values recorded. Just uh, pick one of them and put it in your homework as well as an image of Strand Spring. So yeah, should be fine. All right, next, part C, find the number of invertebrate species in a region. All right, we're gonna 
In this case, we're going to push it, the selection through a few things. We're not going to use the Explorer tool for this. This one worked better by just opening the attribute tables and pushing selections. So we're going to select the Mormon Lake, uh, oh, excuse me, we're going to select the Muggion Rim Springs, the Muggion Ranger District Springs from the Springs Feature class. We're going to push that to the surveys to get all the surveys conducted on the Muggion Ranger District then push that to the invert sampling and then to the taxa invert. <clears throat> so let's do that. It's a select by attributes on the springs feature class to start with. The, the, the information about the ranger district is stored in the land unit detail. This is all illustrated in the lab exercise. Land unit detail equal to the Muggion Rim Ranger District. All right, we hit OK. Let's see what, how many there are. Looks like 194 springs on the Mogion Rim Ranger District. We can hit the zoom to to see where they're all located. I'm going to switch this to imagery so we can see these. This is where they're distributed. Not surprisingly, they're heavily down along the rim here. All right, so now we've got to push this selection to the surveys. We've got 194 springs little burger, related data, push it to surveys. We see that 580 surveys have been done on those springs. We push this selection to the related table, invert sampling. This tells us that 4,894 invertebrates have ever been recorded on any of those surveys. Now we want to get a list of the unique invertebrate names. We push this one more time to taxa invert. And we see that there are 533 unique invertebrate species that have been observed on the Mugion Rim Ranger District. And that's all there is to that. For your homework, you will repeat that process. But instead of the Mugion Rim Ranger District, you'll just do the Mormon Lake Ranger District. So you saw how easy it was. It only takes a few seconds to find out how many there are. Okay, next. We were just seeing we were just starting with springs finding the inverts that were there well you can use these relationship classes going both ways so we can select inverts and find out what springs they've been observed at so that's what we're going to do we're going to select western tiger swallowtail and find out what springs this uh, butterfly has ever been seen at so we start with taxa invert i'm going to clear the selection we're going to do a select by attributes on on the in on the taxa invert where com where yeah common name is equal to western tiger swallowtail here's what it looks like in sql mode hit okay okay here's our single species we're going to push this selection back to the invert sampling table Okay, we see that there's 21 times that somebody's recorded this species. Now let's see how many surveys it's been recorded on. Okay, been recorded on 20 different surveys, and now we see how many springs those surveys were conducted on. Coconino Springs. All right, 16 springs where the Western Tiger Swallowtail had been observed. Okay, so we can, oh yes, open the attribute table and we can uh, zoom to selected. Okay, and this is the distribution. It's just darn hard to see. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go to selection. I'm going to turn that selected set into its own layer. And you can do that, this make layer from selected features. Okay, it makes a new layer here. It looks just the same. Uh, but if I turn the original one off, then all we're left with is the Western Tiger Swallowtail locations. All right, so that's where they are. Now your homework will be to repeat that process, but with an interestingly named species called the, the Pleasing Fungus Beetle, because I just like that name. So you need to tell me how many springs on the Coconino National Forest have we found pleasing fungus beetles. Okay, all right, thanks so much.